This is Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related, and today we're going to be having a bit of a discussion on Xbox Series S and how it can affect Stadia. This past week has been pretty significant for gaming news. Team Xbox has finally announced the launch date and price for the Xbox Series X and Series S. The X being priced at $499 and the S at $299. Now, some of you may be wondering how this affects Stadia whatsoever, but I don't think that's really the case, and many other Stadia content creators have also picked up on this. Whether it be good or bad for Stadia, it is important to discuss. With the Series S priced at $299, it's currently battling a war on two fronts. First off, that's really trying to undercut Sony and what they can price the PS5 Digital Edition at. They want to be seen as the cheapest entry point to next generation gaming, but as many of you and I know, that's not really the case. Plenty of cloud gaming services already exist that are capable of running next generation titles, be it Shadow, Stadia, or even GeForce Now. In fact, even Microsoft's own Xbox game streaming service will be running on Series X hardware at some point. So in reality, is the Series X the cheapest entry point to next generation gaming? No, it simply isn't, but that really doesn't matter. You see, the general public is pretty much unaware that cloud gaming even exists, and the enthusiast gaming community that it should be targeting barely wants to touch it. A lot of this comes from false premises or bad facts that are being shared among other enthusiast crowds who have yet to even try what it's like. And that's not to say that things aren't slowly changing, there is a bit more acceptance of game streaming as a whole going on in the background, but that'll be another topic for another time. What I really want to focus on is the general public. You see, to them, next generation console at $299 is already a steal of a deal, and I'm sure that's going to take away some consumers from the PlayStation 5. But that's not the only thing that Microsoft is doing to lower the barrier of entry for next gen gaming. Some people just can't or aren't willing to drop $299 or $499 on a console outright. And that's exactly where their new payment system, Xbox All Access, comes into play. Starting at $24.99 a month for 24 months, you can get an Xbox Series S, Game Pass Ultimate, Online Play at no upfront cost. Want a Series X instead of an S? Well, that'll be 10 additional dollars a month. That is quite a tempting offer, especially if you planned on getting Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for two years as well as a new console. You're actually going to be saving money through this program. Now this goes without saying, but obviously you're going to have to qualify for this through your credit as well as the fact that it's not going to be available in every country. But they are expanding this program from just being available in the United States to 12 countries total. Included on there are some pretty big names such as Australia, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, South Korea, Sweden, and the UK. All of which are pretty big markets on their own. And I do think this is where Xbox actually stands quite a good chance of taking some of those Stadia players and bringing them over to Team Xbox. Besides the fact that the value proposition is actually pretty insane when you break it down, it's also the fact that we're already paying $10 a month for Stadia Pro. For an additional $15 a month, you're gonna get access to Series S hardware, over 100 games instantly through Game Pass with games rotating in and out, and free online play. Not to mention, Game Pass Ultimate also includes access to Xbox game streaming, which means you'll be able to play your games wherever you go, just like Stadia. And that's not me trying to say that Xbox game streaming is on the same level as Stadia, I still think Google provides a much better experience, but the point is, is that the option is there, and it will only get better over time. In fact, we got a very recent example of this with EA Access joining Game Pass this holiday at no additional cost. Microsoft seems extremely committed to making an insane value even better, and they're really going all in on the subscription model service. More and more, it definitely seems like Microsoft wants to be the Netflix of gaming. With all that taken into account, do I think it poses a threat to Google Stadia? 
Absolutely, and I hope Google sees it that way too. Look, just because I run a Google Stadia focused channel does not mean I'm gonna side with them at every turn, and right now Microsoft has put an insane value on the table. But that's not to say that I think Google Stadia is outclassed in every corner, because that's not true. Google Stadia still has a market, and I'm sure people will still benefit more off Stadia than something like Xbox All Access in various scenarios. If you're somebody who values convenience over everything, then Stadia is still the go-to choice. No other platform comes close to being as easy to access a game, to hop in, out, purchase a new game, and hop in without any wait time at all. It already runs on a variety of hardware, be it your TV, laptop, Chromebook, Android phone, tablet, and more. And we can't forget the fact that Stadia doesn't need to have a pro subscription to run. You can simply buy a game and enjoy the experience at 1080p, a resolution that's higher than what Xbox game streaming does right now. But that's where pretty much all the big advantages Stadia have in the here and now kind of fall off. Xbox is going to be offering you a bigger library of games with your subscription right off the bat, and it's going to be a while before Stadia Pro catches up to that long and growing list. And sure, you could argue that Game Pass games do get removed over time, but let's not forget that Games with Gold also exists, and that system is pretty much how Stadia Pro works right now. Then we can talk about the added benefit of including Xbox game streaming. Now, to be honest, this is probably the weakest selling point to me, simply because I don't think it's that great. And while yes, the library is certainly enticing since it supports all Game Pass games, right now I think it's an inferior streaming experience. That is, until you bring local hardware into the equation. After all, Xbox Game Streaming also allows you to stream from your local Xbox to whatever device that supports it. And that experience will allow you to play all your Xbox games whether you own a disc copy, a digital download, or whether or not it's a part of Game Pass. But to be fair, this will have its own limitations as well. You're not going to be getting a free hardware upgrade on your local hardware. That'll only be done on the Xbox server blades on Microsoft's side. As I mentioned earlier, in the game streaming regard, Stadia has the upper hand simply because it provides a better service and is more qualified once again in the here and now. But likewise, Xbox also has a huge benefit, and we can't forget about it because it's something that Stadia desperately needs. And that's the fact that with Xbox, you're going to be pretty much guaranteed access to every future and upcoming third party release while also having access to the entire library of Xbox games. Be it this new upcoming generation or all the ones before it for Xbox, they're all going to be playable for you on your local hardware. And since you can also stream from that local hardware, well, you get the idea. Myself, I'm not really a big user of backwards compatibility. While I do love the option of being able to play my older games, it's not a selling point for me. But I know it certainly is for many of you out there. The biggest takeaway from all of this is the fact that you're pretty much guaranteed to have every major multi-platform title release come to you. Something that Google has yet to secure, and to be fair, Google's only been out a year, and this sort of stuff takes time. But I'm viewing this strictly from the consumer perspective. Perspective. And in my eyes, I just want access to the games I want to play as soon as I can. Games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, and more really do matter. Whether you like the games or not, they're important. It's always bothered me how many people tend to brush these two games off as if they're not something deeply important to a gaming platform's library. Take Call of Duty for example. Whether you think it's rehashed every year or not, the fact remains that it's one of the top selling franchises of all time. It's sold over 300 million copies as a franchise since 2003, and it's only bested by Mario, Tetris, Pokemon, and Grand Theft Auto. And for many people out there, these games are deciding factors on whether they're going to play on a platform or not. On top of that, we also can't forget the recent investments Microsoft has made into their first party studio lineup which is looking pretty strong now. While I do think it's the weakest of the big three between Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, I definitely think it has a lot of potential and I'm interested to see how it grows. 
the fact that they're all included in Game Pass Ultimate is a nice bonus. And that's what really makes Xbox All Access so appealing. It's when you take all those benefits and meld them together under one monthly cost. Stadia does beat it at what Stadia does best, and that's providing an excellent game streaming experience, but it doesn't offer all those other benefits. It doesn't secure you getting the games you want on day one. It really is a marvel of technology, and to this day, I'm pretty amazed at what Stadia can do. But to the average consumer, I would recommend Xbox All Access over Stadia right now. But this can always change, and I think Google really is aware of that. I feel like they're starting to step up their game. The fact that the Immortals Phoenix Rising demo is going to be exclusive on Stadia is a huge piece of promotion. The rumors going around about the new Chromecast with Android TV costing only $50 to $60 is another step in the right direction. And to be perfectly fair, the Stadia library is looking really strong right now, especially this month with all the games they've added, be it NBA 2K21 or Marvel's Avengers. At the very least, it's in a better position than it's ever been before, and there's still a few months of games to look forward to up ahead. If Google continues to push this forward, I think Stadia can be in a good spot. But this is something I'll definitely discuss in an upcoming video this week, so stay tuned for that. But now that you've heard my piece on the Xbox Series S and how I think Xbox All Access competes with Stadia, I want to hear yours. Will you be taking advantage of the Xbox All Access program, maybe pick up a PS5, or will you be sticking with Stadia throughout? Let me know your opinion on all this down in the comment section below as I am extremely interested to hear what you have to say. Now if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Today's end of video message is going to be a simple thank you for your patience, I know I haven't uploaded in a bit, but honestly speaking, I just took a bit of a break to actually play some games. It just started to feel like most of my free time was dedicated to talking about games rather than playing them, and while I do enjoy giving you my opinion and thoughts, I do think it's important to actually enjoy the hobby itself. Finding a balance between making YouTube videos and playing the games themselves is quite a challenge for me, but I'm working on it and I'll have more content to share this week. There's actually quite a lot of interesting topics I want to take on, so I hope you look forward to them, and uh, as always, thank you for watching. This has been Generation Stadia, giving you that daily dose of everything and anything cloud gaming related. The Gen S community is over 4,900 strong and growing by the day, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.